Hi, this is the Avionics Intelligence Report, and I'm John McHale. As was well publicized, last weekend's successful assault by the U.S. Navy SEALs to kill Osama bin Laden made use of Army Black Hawk and Chinook helicopters. It's unclear which Chinook version was used in the assault on bin Laden's compound, but new Chinook models, the CH-47F and MH-47G Special Operations variants, have brand new state-of-the-art avionics, automated flight controls, and a digital cockpit GPS map display. The F model, which delivers supplies and troops at high altitudes and mountainous terrain, such as in Afghanistan, is engineered with a common aviation architecture system, also known as CAS, C-A-A-S, cockpit, which consists of five multifunctional dis digital displays, giving pilots key situational and navigational information. U.S. Army officials, in an effort to keep costs down and at the same time integrate commercial hardware and software technology, worked with Rockwell Collins engineers in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, to develop McCAS, which is implemented through open standards on hardware and software. Rockwell Collins is currently managing avionics upgrades on the CH-47 F and MH-47G helicopters through CAS. The digital automated flight control system, which helps stabilize flight, also helps the aircraft to fly a route autonomously. The company's multifunctional display, 268, MFD 268, is used across all CAS systems today and implemented on the the CH-47F, says Bo Svatek, Program Manager for Advanced Rotorcraft Programs at Rockwell Collins. Also, the software configurable digital air data computer in the cockpit is from Curtis Wright Controls in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Chinook is help being upgraded through a multi-year procurement strategy, which locks in configuration early on so the taxpayer can benefit from consistency, Svatek so told me. The beauty of it, he says, is that the helicopter got a brand new life almost like it was a brand new platform because of CAS. I got to sit in the cockpit and get an overview of the avionics from a pilot during the U.S. Army Aviation Association of America, also known as the Quad A annual forum in Nashville last month. It is sweet, and the enthusiasm of the pilots for this technology is really hard to ignore. He was so excited by the capabilities it has, said it just makes his job so much easier. There are other Army helicopters getting upgrade or avionics facelifts as well, Two of those are the OH-58D Kiowa Warrior and the UH-72A Lakota. The Kiowa Warrior, which has an average age of 39 years, was the recipient of near-term armed reconnaissance helicopter funding. The ARH was canceled about two years ago. Lucon Lieutenant Colonel Scott Rauer, the Kiowa Warrior Program Manager at Redstone Arsenal in Alabama, told me that the upgraded OH-58F will keep the Kiowa Warrior Program going until 2025 for reconnaissance and light attack missions. The OH-58 Cockpit and Sensor Upgrade Program, also known as CASUP, C-A-S-U-P, essentially converts OH-58Ds into F models. The Army wanted to upgrade these as fast as possible and will start converting the first aircraft this year. The new technology provided under CASUP includes an advanced nose-mounted sensor, improved cockpit control hardware and software for enhanced situational awareness, three-color multifunctional displays from Elbit Systems, a dual redundant digital engine controller for enhanced engine safety from Rolls-Royce, digital inner cockpit communications, digital Hellfire missiles for future upgrades, aircraft survivability equipment upgrades, and a redesigned aircraft wiring harness. Rauer says the Kiowa Warrior got left behind when it came to some of the new digital technology, and now they're catching up with full digital cockpits. He's very excited about the program. Redesigning the cockpit also included taking old steam gauges and other instruments and streamlining all of them into the Elbit Glass full-color cockpit software display. The pilots can now look at three displays for improved situational awareness with much tighter scan patterns, which lets pilots cut down on how much they bring their eyes into the cockpit. As for the other helicopter, the Lakota, that came into existence via redirected Comanche helicopter funding, says Lieutenant Colonel Dave Bristol, uh, Lakota program manager. It was based on the American Eurocopter 85 multi-mission rotorcraft as a replacement for older UH-1 Hueys and OH-58 AC Kiowas. It supports several missions through mission equipment package upgrades. The latest upgrade is a security and support one and uses COTS avionics. The whole program is COTS driven, such that the Army is taking an actual helicopter off the shelf and painting it green, Bristol says. Using COTS makes for a faster production and deployment, and DOD leaders want new helicopter capability in the field by this time next year. Building the UH-72A Lakota quickly freed up more than 20 UH-60 Black Hawk aircraft to other missions that support overseas military operations. The avionics in the modification kit includes two 10-inch touchscreen displays from SkyQuest in Berkshire, England, 
that show electrical optical infrared sensors as well as moving map imagery. SkyQuest, which is owned by Curtis Roy Controls in Charlotte, North Carolina, also provides a digital video recorder down, data downlink system and video management system. The DVR has three hour recording capability and video can be sent during critical state emergencies directly to the governor's office from the Lakota cockpit. The moving map system is a Euronav VRN6 moving map system from Euroavionics that interfaces with the electro-optics infrared sensor and shows street level topographical VFR sectional and IFR en route low altitude maps. The Army is a total acquisition target of 345 helicopters through 2015 with 154 having been delivered to the National Guard so far. The Guard will receive 210 of that final total. The upgraded Lakotas will be used by the National Guard for reconnaissance, border protection, command and control, and air movement operations that support U.S. homeland defense and security. What really struck me about the Lakota upgrade, though, is the way the Army is just gushing about the fact that EADS North America delivered the Lakotas on schedule, and even early in some cases. I guess this is partially due to the Army's experience with past programs that never ran on time or on budget. Colonel Neil Thurgood, Army Project Manager, Utility Helicopters, told me at a press conference at Quad A that the major reason that the Lakotas are meeting their delivery goals is that the requirements have not changed, which often happens in the program, causing the integrators and industry partners to have to keep redesigning to keep up with the changes, which equates to delays. Colonel Thurgood said the Army will still make modifications as components go obsolete, but the requirements will not change. I'm John McHale, and this is the Avionics Intelligence Report.